Welcome to the Sound on Sound Recording and Mixing Channel podcast. Hello, I'm Paul White, and I'd like to cover a few fun things you can do with reverb, but it makes sense first to cover a couple of basics. For that matter, why do we need reverb at all? Well, there's no law that says you have to use reverb, and where you want to make something sound very close up and intimate, not adding reverb may well be the right thing to do. However, in studio recording, reverb is often added for a variety of reasons, the most common being to create a sense of space around an instrument that was DI'd or close mic'd. The same treatment can also be used for sample-based sounds that have no added effects. So over the coming tips, I'll start off with simple treatments that most of you will already be familiar with, and then look at the more creative stuff as we go along. Here's my first tip. If you need to create a sense of space without adding an obvious reverb decay or tail, rather than just using a short reverb, call up an ambience or early reflection setting. These replicate the various reflections that occur in a real space, but without adding a reverb tail. Here's an example, first with a dry sound, and then repeated with added ambience reverb. You'll hear that the treated sound takes on a sense of space and stereo width, but there's no reverb tail. Tip 2. Adding a more conventional reverb with an obvious tail is a popular way of treating vocals, though the length of the reverb tail tends to change with the musical styles and fashions. I find that the vintage plate reverb emulation often works best as it doesn't attempt to impose the illusion of a particular type of space on the voice. If you specifically want the acoustic of a cathedral, garden shed or parking garage of course, then the best option is probably a convolution reverb that uses impulse responses recorded in real spaces. Here's a segment of voice, first dry and then treated with plate reverb. You've probably used this type of setting before, so I'd like to move on to some more creative reverb applications, which often means combining reverb with other commonly available plugins such as delay, modulation or pitch shift. As a very general rule, the busier the musical passage, the shorter the reverb time needs to be if you're not to muddy the sound, though using EQ to remove some low end from the reverb can help. With more sparse productions, you can often afford to be more generous with your reverb. With any of the reverb treatments discussed here, it's worth experimenting with mono reverb panned to the same place as the dry sound. This trick is commonly used to create a stronger sense of stereo placement. Another worthwhile experiment is to pan the dry sound to one side and the reverb to the other to create a more obvious effect. Tip 3. One of my favourite treatments is a combination of a fairly long generic reverb and a tape style delay set to sync to quarter notes, the trick being to limit the delay to a fairly narrow bandwidth to avoid the sound becoming muddy at the bottom end and too distracting at the high end. Here's a sampled piano, first dry and then treated with a combination of reverb and a repeating delay filtered below 800Hz and above 1.2kHz. This kind of treatment isn't just for the Lentils and Crystals fraternity, of which I'm an honorary member, it also works well in chill out and TV soundtrack music too. (laughs) 
Tip 4. Adding texture. If your reverb is set up on an AUX send rather than inserted in the channel, you can add a little texture to the sound by putting a modulation effect either before or after the reverb plugin. Putting it before the plugin creates a more diffuse sound while putting it after the reverb makes the modulation sound much more obvious. You can use chorus, rotary speakers, phasers or flangers. But for this example here's a piano, the flanger patch before the reverb. Then we hear it again with the flanger placed after the reverb where the familiar flanger sweep becomes much more obvious. Tip 5, and this is one of my favourites, Shimmer Reverb. Shimmer Reverb's a treatment that works especially well with guitars as it creates a synth-like pad sound that floats behind the main guitar sound. And while you can buy pedals that create Shimmer Reverb or dedicated Shimmer Reverb plugins, such as those from Valhalla and Eventide, you may find that you can set up your own effect using plugins you already have. For my example, I've added a little delay and reverb to the original track, but also set up an aux send that feeds a reverb via a pitch shifter plugin set to increase the pitch by one octave. To add texture, I've put a rotary speaker emulation plugin after the pitch reverb to create a sense of motion. You could also use chorus or phasing here to create alternate versions. To make your shimmer guitar sound even less guitar-like, you can use a volume pedal or a slow attack plugin to disguise the giveaway attack of the guitar note. A good hardware unit for achieving this effect is the Electroharmonics Attack Decay pedal, but when working in the box, I usually fall back on Eventide's Physion, which includes an excellent slow attack preset. Tip 6. Quantized Pitch Reverb Sticking with the guitar for a moment, if your playing style involves a lot of bent notes or whammy bar action, you can create a subtly different effect by putting a pitch corrector before the reverb, again fed from an aux send. Set the scale of the pitch corrector to that part that you're playing, set the pitch correction speed to its fastest, and then what you hear is a reverb that is quantized in pitch, while the dry guitar notes can bend naturally. You can create a more obvious effect by setting the pitch corrector to only selected notes from the scale, or even just a root note. If you set it to the root note, the reverb always comes out at the root note pitch, regardless of what notes you play. Of course, this only works if you play monophonically, as a typical real-time pitch shifter can only track monophonic lines. Here's a quick example where the reverb is set to just the root and fifth notes of the scale. And finally, here's tip 7. 
Now, reverb isn't something you normally associate with bass instruments as it can muddy the sound, but one interesting trick is to add a long reverb to a bass and then feed it through a square wave tremolo or chopper synced to the track tempo. The reverb then becomes a rhythmic effect. Of course you can also do this with non-bass sounds. You can also add some radical EQ to the chopped reverb to add definition if you feel that it needs it. So here to finish is a very simple tune that uses the combined reverb and delay piano setting we discussed earlier, bass with chopped reverb and guitar with shimmer reverb. I've also added a guitar part recorded using an ebo, adding delay, reverb and a rotary speaker effect. Ah, so chilled you can almost smell the lentils. Well, that's it for this show, and thanks for listening. But just before I go, let me point you to soundonsound.com slash podcasts, where you can find lots of other shows playing on our channels. <laughs>